Good afternoon and welcome to Williams TV from a very sunny Austria. Very sunny. Very, very sunny indeed. Very, very hot. Melting a little <laughs> bit. So we'll, we'll move out of the sun quickly. And um, We thought this week that we'd talk to you a little bit about tyres because it's the one thing that people always ask us questions about and it's the one thing that always seems to be a hot topic, whether it's in practice, qualifying or the race. So uh, we're going to give you a little insight into that today. Let's go. So we're going to go into tyre world now. And we've got the lovely Rob Anderson here, Hello. who's tyre technician here at Rocket Williams Racing. So, Rob, this is your little lair. Yeah. Tell us about it and tell us a little about your role. Uh, welcome to Tire World. I'm Rob, I'm the tyre technician. Um, we have 13 sets of dries, four sets of inters, three sets of wets, and that's per car. So 160 tyres in total for the weekend. Um, me and Smithers, we prep them, get them in the blankets, maintain them, and then obviously sort them out for running. Very sweaty job. <laughs> yeah, so it's obviously Thursday here in Austria and yeah. it's a very, very warm day. Very warm, yeah. So what's today like where we've got no cars running? What are you actually up to today and what are uh, you doing to get ready for the weekend? So today on a Thursday normally is uh, wets and inters. So we get all them, prepare them, pressure them, down to what the engineers want. Um, yeah, make the most of the, the calm before the storm really. And in terms of all those, the, you know, the sets of tyres you've got, obviously the, the engineers pick which tyre sets they want for each session. The prep that goes into it, obviously, you're looking at the, the pressures, yeah. the temperatures. This is all stuff that comes from Pirelli, yeah? Yes, that's correct. So, yeah, like the heating cycle is like probably the most crucial point. Uh, gets them all really nice and soft, and it also brings the temperature up to where we would like it for the, uh, the session. So that's a pretty big job, then, with all the sets of tyres, and a lot of information to take from the engineers. What yeah. kind of temperatures are you getting the front and rears to for them to be ready for the session? So the fronts are at 100 degrees, and the rears are at 80. And that, well, so that's, that's the aim, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably yeah. a bit of a tight, a bit of an art. burns as well. Yeah, to get it there. And so then for the rest of the weekend, in the sessions, like how busy are you? Is this... is the prep day your busiest day or is it a case of it's a continuous cycle working with Pirelli and the engineers? Um, I think the prep days probably our quietest days so we make the most of it but sort of like Fridays aren't too bad qualifying can be where it really gets sort of very busy especially if it's a wet dry as well so you go in with a set of dries and then all of a sudden it starts raining and then you've got to get a set of wets and then you're back out so like hungry last year it was wet and dry yeah it was all a, black, all a bit of a blur really but <laughs> But we got there in the end. Yeah, we got there in the end, absolutely. Cool. Well, we actually went as well to have a look at Pirelli to have a little bit of behind the scenes as to what they get up to, which we can take a look at now. So we're here in the Pirelli fitting area. Um, this is where all the Pirelli tyres are fitted for each Grand Prix. In total at Pirelli, we bring 1,800 tyres approximately to each Grand Prix. So as you can see, there are a lot of tyres to be fitted. The process of fitting the tyres is actually quite similar to what you would see in a normal road car garage, except the process is more sophisticated and more complex. So here basically the teams bring the wheel rims, the wheel rims arrive in those boxes that you see over there. After the wheel rims are taken off, the tyres are actually put on the wheel rims by this team of fitters here. Normally there are 18 fitters, around 18 fitters at each Grand Prix. Once the tyre is on the rim, it's then inflated with these machines and finally the tyre is balanced. Normally a fitter, if he knows what he's doing, they all know what they're doing, they can inflate a whole tyre from start to finish in about two and a half minutes. So it's faster than any garage on the high street. Pirelli works with Williams in the same way that it works with all the other teams. So um, each team has an engineer which is dedicated to the team. And that Pirelli engineer is like almost a part of the team, so he works very or she. He or she works very closely with um, with the team, with the drivers, advising the team and the drivers uh, about how to get the best use out of the tyres, and also acting as sort of the link between the team and Pirelli, so passing on advice and feedback from one direction to another. Thank you to Pirelli as well for letting us have a little bit of an insight into what their guys get up to. Um, we can now have a, a wander around the corner and we should be able to find um, Jack Purcell, who is oh, actually our tyre engineer. Him. Yes, just wandering. We can just grab come in, you. Come we'll in grab the middle, Jack. The middle. There we go. So obviously we've got the tyre technicians down here yep. who are actually prepping the tyres. Um, in terms of your role, what does, what does that actually involve? Uh, so... I try and extract the most performance uh, that we can out of a tyre, so this can be in qualifying, just looking over a single time lap or uh, through the weekend uh, over the race. Um, so obviously working with, with these guys down here and preparing the tyres, uh, working with the race engineers, 
uh, feedback from the drivers, uh, and then it all feeds into the race strategy at the end of the day. So um, there's quite a lot of work to do in maximising performance as much as possible. And in terms of the things that can affect the tyres, because obviously it is one of those things that, especially in qualifying, you yep. find you know a driver has the tyres working or, or not. What what kind of things we've talked about temperatures and pressures, and obviously yeah, sure. getting them to the optimum. But how you know how many other things can actually affect? Uh, that? Well, we are very limited in how we leave the garage, so the the tyre will never leave the garage at its optimal grip point. Um, and this is because we're limited with what we can do with pressures because of uh, Pirelli set safety limits. Uh, temperature limits so uh, in order to achieve the most that we possibly can we have to coach the drivers how in particular to drive the outlap so we might think about doing some weaving on the straight to get some temperature in the front or minimizing rear slip on exits uh, to keep the rear tires cool mm. uh, it's normally the way we want to go in, <laughs> in terms of getting yeah. the tires ready uh, but uh, even the slightest change in track temperature can have a massive uh, difference in how we approach uh, outlaps for example yeah. If it increases by five degrees, we, we really need to start backing off in certain corners uh, or conversely, if it incre you know, decreases, then we really do have to push the tyre to get it working, get it in the optimal grip state uh, yeah. to get the most out of the single time lap. So there's a lot of like thinking on your feet really, isn't there? It's not one of uh, those things that you can just kind of plan and then uh, well, <laughs> go for. Yeah, you say that, but we do do a lot of simulation before coming to the weekend. So I run hundreds of simulations uh, based on uh, we can alter the, the driving style over an outlap so we can make them yeah. quicker or slower uh, and then we can change the track temperature so we've got a reasonable idea of going in beforehand but there's always other circumstances that always come into play there's traffic on the outlap that every compound yeah. is different uh, the track roughness is different at every circuit so we're, we're constantly monitoring this as much as possible yeah. um, in order to extract as much as we can how how good are the drivers? Uh, you know, I, we we always hear the drivers being told to to do certain things yeah. in different corners. How how easy is that? For I mean, I know they're F1 drivers; they should be able to do uh, everything that they need to. But is that is that quite tricky? Actually, being able to coach them and get them to do exactly what's needed. I would, I would say definitely some drivers are a lot better than others at, <laughs> at listening, um, and some more willing to do what you say. Yeah. Uh, generally, with R2 now, the, the approach is quite good. So that they will listen to feedback. Uh, and I, they can feel it themselves. So for me, giving guidance of what they've got to do is uh, normally goes hand in hand, so you would hope so, but uh, there are occasions where they're right and I'm wrong. So. <laughs> and now you sit on the pit wall, Jack, during the race. Yeah. What's the uh, communication and what's your role during the race to feed back to, to everyone else in the team and, and what we're doing with the tyres? Yeah, so the race, obviously, a completely different scenario to qualifying, trying to maximise the performance over well 70 laps around here um, it, it's quite different how we have to manage the tyres so temperatures come up normally getting too hot so there's 57 degrees on the track temperature will have, have a massive effect on the rear tyre degradation so uh, giving feedback to the race performance engineers which will then feed to the to the uh, drivers themselves how to manage the tyre um, saving in particular corners might introduce some techniques that we can really control the, the tyres but in other situations we want to do the opposite we just want to keep pushing and so I also feed into the strategy. So I give an impression of how long the tyre will last. Um, and then we can make some strat strategic decisions based around that. Uh, yeah, we want to pit obviously. stop and if we can get the tyre to the end or not. Yeah, because I know that you often hear on the radio during the races asking the drivers for feedback on how, how much life they think they can feel in the tyres. But I guess you're looking at the data trying yeah. to combine with that to work out actually what's a feasible so, strategy. Yeah, so the, the data we look at, we, we do a lot of work on in FP1, FP2 to try and get as much of an idea of how the tyres going to interact as possible. Um, but at the end of the day, the feedback from the driver is key. They, they really are out there feeling it. So yeah. sometimes <laughs> you, you don't listen to the data as much as you should do. But <laughs> <laughs> no, the drivers sure make sure you listen to them, I think, a lot of the time. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, any other interesting facts or stats you can throw at us? Or uh, well, are you stats out now? People are normally surprised. Well, the fact how hot the tyres do get when we're running, pounding around multiple yeah. laps, and it can reach in the order of 130 degrees, um, which is it was re really really hot. Um, when we're doing burnouts, the, the surface temperature yeah. can can reach nearly 200 degrees. So yeah. um, there's a lot of energy going through the rubber, and it's quite hard to manage, you know, through through the race. And uh, yeah, 
I, yeah. I don't know how many more. You often, uh, yeah, you often hear the analogy of people saying you could fry an egg on a tyre. Pretty yeah. sure we tried that with Ted Kravitz once. And, uh, I, I think it, Singapore it, last year. Yeah, yeah. It didn't quite work in the no. garage, but I still think the theory, if you did it out on track, it would work. <laughs> but uh, they are pretty def hard. Definitely, yeah. Uh, you, <laughs> yeah. There would be certain situations you could yeah. try it. But, but we're not going to be throwing eggs at our tyres just yet. I think we tried it fell off straight away. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't quite prove the point, but I think actually, no. like you say, the temperatures are pretty hot out there. So oh, yeah, uh, yeah. if we did throw eggs out there, they probably would scramble. Yeah. Maybe one for uh, another day. Um, <laughs> thank you very much That's for your right. time. No um, and thank you guys for joining us. I uh, hope you found it useful learning a little bit more about tyres.